Hello marine biology students. In this last video of the week, we're going to be talking about cetaceans, which include whales and dolphins. Order Cetacea includes whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Their forelimbs are modified into flippers, and they have a fin-like tail called a fluke. Their nostrils are located on the top of their head as a single or double opening called a blowhole. Among the two suborders of the cetaceans are the mysticeti, or the baleen whales, and the toothed whales, which are from the suborder of odontoceti. Whales may be identified from their fluke shape. Their blow pattern or the view of their back when starting a dive. Baleen whales have rows of flexible fibrous plates known as baleen that hang from their upper jaws. This baleen is made out of keratin, which is the same material that fingernails and hair are made of. They are filter feeders where they take in huge mouthfuls of water containing krill or small fish. and the baleen traps the prey as the water is forced back out of the mouth. There are 13 species of baleen whales, including right whales, gray whales, blue whales, and humpback whales. Here we can see what these baleen plates look like in the shape of the mouth cavity for these whales. Here we can see a variety of baleen whales these are among the largest animals that have ever lived on the planet Earth. The toothed whales have simple peg-like teeth, which vary considerably in number and size among the various species. Dolphin teeth are conical and interlocking, whereas those of porpoises are spade-shaped. Teeth are adapted for grasping and tearing, not for chewing. The diet of toothed whales include fish, squids, and bottom invertebrates. The toothed whales include dolphins, porpoises, belugas, narwhals, sperm whales, orcas, river dolphins, and beaked whales. Many are threatened with extinction as a result of whaling. Cetaceans are marine mammals, and so they must breathe air and they have lungs. They also acquire some special adaptations in order to dive for the distances that they do. One of these adaptations is rapid breathing prior to the dive, known as apneustic breathing. Their gas exchange is much more efficient than ours, with their lungs removing about 90% of the oxygen from the air they breathe in, as opposed to only 20% for humans. They have elastic tissue in their lungs, which helps to temporarily expand the lungs during apneustic breathing. Marine mammals have more blood than non-diving mammals for their size, and so this larger amount of blood includes more hemoglobin for storing oxygen. The muscles of a diving marine mammal also contain more myoglobin, to hold oxygen in the tissues. Other adaptations for diving include the heart rate dramatically slowing during a dive, known as bradycardia. Blood flow reduced to the extremities. And the digestive system making sure that the central nervous system remains fully oxygenated. The muscles of diving mammals also employ anaerobic respiration. As necessary, 
which results in the buildup of lactic acid in their muscles to a higher degree than most other mammals could tolerate. During a dive, the rib cage and lungs can almost fully collapse to force air into tissues and prevent decompression sickness, or the bends. An important ability of many toothed whales is echolocation. Sound waves are emitted. As a series of clicks of varying frequencies, the melon, which is a filled section at the front of the skull, directs the outgoing sound waves. After the sound strikes an object, the echo is reflected back. These reflected echoes are then received back by the melon and the lower jaw itself. These sound waves are then directed to the inner ear. The longer it takes an echo to return, the farther away the object is located. This is a characteristic of toothed whales. Marine mammals have a variety of behaviors. They are well known for their vocalizations. Including the barking of sea lions and the songs of the humpback whales. They engage in play behavior regularly. Including sexual play. Marine mammals have large brains and have a great ability for learning new behaviors. One behavior of many cetaceans is breaching. Breaching is when a whale or dolphin jumps out of the water and crashes back into the water on their back. The reason for this behavior could be removing parasites, could be a warning signal, could be to avoid suitors, or it could just be fun. Some whales also show spying behavior. In which they will peek their head above water, looking to see what's around. Many whales are known for their long distance migrations. where their migrations are timed with feeding in cold water and breeding in warm water. When one member of a group or pod is sick, the other members will care for it. This occasionally is the cause of mass strandings where the leader of a pod is sick or injured and ends up drawing the rest of the pod to shore. Another feature of most marine mammals is maternal care of the young. When discussing marine mammal reproduction, fertilization is always internal, and so copulation is involved. For most cetaceans, the penis remains within the body before copulation. Copulation occurs on land for most pinnipeds. With the exception of the walruses, other marine mammals copulate at sea. As mentioned previously, both in captivity and in the wild, sexual play is common for marine mammals. Another feature of many marine mammals is delayed implantation. of the fetus that allows the newborn to be born at a time that is best for its survival. So implantation does not occur until the gestation period would result in a good time for the offspring to be born. There are several methods for copulation among the cetaceans. Occasionally, gray whales need a help from a buddy 
whereas humpback whales mostly have it figured out on their own. Gestation time varies in marine mammals. But it's normally from 11 to 12 months in cetaceans. Calves are always born tail first so that they can remain attached to the placenta. until the entire body is out of the mother, and the young can be assisted to the water surface in order to breathe. As with previous chapters, there are very helpful tables at the end of the chapter highlighting the similarities and differences between these different marine vertebrates that aren't the fish. And I'd highly encourage you to go to table 9.3 in your textbook to review the information about these different animal groups. And that concludes our discussion of cetaceans. Now, this is the last video before assessment two. And after assessment two, we'll start talking about marine environments and ecosystems. All right, I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.